All right, so linear quadratic system. So this is, we're solving systems. So solving a linear quadratic um, equation is just finding the point of intersection. So, so solve linear quadratic equations equals finding point of intersection. Okay, so same as solving a linear system. So the first thing you want to do is set the equations equal to each other and solve for x. And then after that, sub your x values back into the original equation, or one of them, to solve y. Okay, so we're essentially just doing substitution. When we're looking at these types of equations, we can either have zero solutions where the lines look like this, one solution, oopsie, or two solutions. Okay, and I've given you just examples using the graph just to show this. But those are the only things that we can have. We can flip the quadratics around, but same thing. We can only have zero, one, or two solutions. So looking at some examples, the first one is kind of nice and easy. Because we're finding the point of intersection, the y's have to be equal to each other and the x's have to be equal to each other. So here, we already have y equals and y equals. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set the equations equal to one another. And we need to rearrange and solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side here. So we're going to get x squared minus 4x. The two ones will cancel out, equals 0. So then we get x and x minus 4, just factoring out an x. So x equals 0, or x equals 4. Then I'm just going to use the linear equation, because it's always going to be easier. So for x equals 0, we've got y equals 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Therefore, the point of intersection here is 0, negative 1. And then for x equals 4, we've got y equals 2 times 4. 4 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 9. Therefore, our point of intersection is 4 and 9. Okay, and I've done a couple extra steps there. You probably wouldn't have to do all of them. Um, solving for x, that's probably all the steps you'd need. But for solving for y, it's just a quick substitution, and I'm showing you the answers. Um, solve for the sum of equations. If you ever had to check, so I didn't do it in the last one, you need to check in both of the equations. So you would need to check the x and y values for both equations, and you're doing a left side, right side check. That's the only way to do a formal check. Okay, so for this one, the first step we need to do is we need to re rearrange this into y equals 2x minus 8. Okay, all I did was move the negative y to the right hand side. And then I rearranged it to make it look nicer. So now we're going to have 3x squared plus 12x plus 14 equals 2x minus 8. So that's going to give us 3x squared plus 10x plus 8 is 22. Okay, and that's not going to be factorable. Um, anything... Any multiples of 22 multiplied by 3 are going to give us numbers that are too big. So we're going to have to try the quadratic formula out. So we've got negative b, which is negative 10, plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times 22 times 3, all over 2 times 3. So when we're looking at that, we're, 
if you haven't noticed it already, you should see that 4 times 22 times 3 is going to be greater than 100. So what we're going to have is 10 plus or minus the square root 100 minus 264 over 6. Therefore, we have no real roots. And what we're looking at here is we've got 100 minus 264 is going to give us a negative number in the square root, which is going to give us no real roots, which is going to give us no solutions. Okay, so this is this first case where the quadratic and the linear equation are never going to meet. All right, so now giving a relevant situation, this, this is kind of, I don't know, it's really reaching to find an equation here. But if we're looking at something like a football player trying to block a punt, so if the punt equation was the quadratic and the... Um, person approaching it was kind of on the downswing, so they're going to be something like this. Um, they're going, what, they're four, so kind of something like this. And then the quadratic is going to be, well, I don't even know. The quadratic is going to look something like that. All right, so what we need to do is you don't actually have to have an exact drawing. I was just kind of showing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our equations equal to each other. So we've got negative 4.9x squared plus 18.24x plus 0 0.8 equals negative 1.43x plus 4.26. Now I'm moving everything to the right hand side here just to make this squared positive. But really, it doesn't matter what side of the equation you put the stuff on. I'm just going to leave it on the left because it would be like me moving everything back to the left. So I'm changing all of the signs. Think of it as multiplying everything by negative 1. So I'm changing all of the signs here, leaving everything on the left-hand side because it's just aesthetically more pleasing. Um, and I'm rearranging the equation. So then we've got negative 19.67x. Um, and then that's going to be what? Ooh. What is it? going to be 4.26 minus 0.8. Whoops. 4.26 minus 0.8. Going to give us... Oh, plus 3.46 equals 0. Now, if you can factor that, you're better than me. Um, but what we can try is bringing out the 4.9. Um, 3.6 is probably going to be pretty tough. What I would end up doing here is I would probably end up just using the quadratic formula. It just seems like the easiest way. We're going to have x equals negative negative is going to be positive. So we've got 19.67 plus or minus square root negative 19.67 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times 3.46. I'm going to turn that into a decimal. Um, I'm going to try to keep the decimals right until the very end. But um, for this note, I might just put them as 2. Uh, so what we're going to have there then is 19.47 oops, 19.67 squared. So 386.9089 minus 4 times 4.9 times 3.46, so that's 319. So we know it's going to be a positive answer. So we've got 19.67 plus or minus, and then we've got, let's see what 
this is. Oh, no. Uh, let's try that again. 19.67 squared. Next step is to keep it in your calculator. Minus 4 times 4.9 times 3.46. We get 319, and then we're going to square root that. So we get 17.863 divided by um, 4.9 times that. I'm going to do this 9.8. And for those of you taking physics, you should notice that that's going to give us gravity. So we've got our 9.8 there. So we're going to get 19.67 plus our little memory there. So 19.67 plus 17.863 divided by 9.8. So we get 3.829, 3.83, we'll call it. Or, I've got to do the minus, 19.67 minus 17.863 divided by 9.8. That's 0 0.18. Oh boy. So 0 0.18. Now, we have to go back and look at the actual situation here. We're trying to block a punt. So, what that's saying, and we can see over on the left hand side, or the right hand side, the quadratic that I drew is probably not overly great probably going to look something, let's redraw this equation, that one's probably something like that, the quadratic's going to look something like that. Now, even if we looked at this equation and we realized this isn't possible just because the ball would actually have to be below the ground, so then this over here is not possible. You could also look at it that there's no way that someone could jump in the air for 3.8 seconds on a downward angle. While we're, I'm not asking you to know everything about sports and situations, you should understand generally that someone can't be in the air that long. So therefore, the punter can block the ball. I need to have a therefore statement here. So, and it happens at... Time equals 0 0.18. What do we have? X is measured in what? So the ball's height is this, the height of the ball approaching. It doesn't happen. We would assume that this is seconds. So 0 0.18 seconds. Um, there's a bunch of examples here. There's no real questions in the book that we're going to go through. I've got examples here. I've got the solution.